Hello. Okay. So, camarones a la diabla. Generally speaking, what that means, shrimp with a spicy kick to it, okay? So, with three ingredients, I'm going to show you how to make a stellar shrimp dish. Hmm? Okay, so while we do that, I'm going to also tell you my story as to why I avoid gluten at all costs, okay? So, three simple ingredients, okay? So, ingredient number one, chorizo. What is chorizo? Chorizo is a seasoned Mexican sausage, okay? Now, it does come in a casing, so kind of looks like this. Don't get freaked out, it's okay, all right? Because it's already pre-seasoned, you wanna make sure that you get a good quality, okay? I live in Oakley, I go down the street, Bunchels Market, shout out to them, they have great stuff, okay? You can also buy this at any grocery store. Now, I'm a little weary of the grocery stores like Safeway and Walmart and stuff because the one they sell, it is good, but very greasy and yeah. Anyway, go to a Mexican store. They sell it, trust me, good. Now, the second ingredient is going to be a hot um, salsa. El pato is the best, okay? So I have two cans of that, and third ingredient is going to be shelled, peeled, deveined, tail-on shrimp, okay? Now, be careful when you buy them. You wanna make sure you get the ones that are cooked. Now, if you get the raw ones, that's okay. You just have one more step, okay? So, these have already been defrosted and rinsed off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lovely chorizo, take a knife, and you're gonna kind of part it in the middle, okay? You're gonna part that in the middle because again, it has the casing and you do not wanna eat the casing. All right, so I've got a preheated pan here. There we go. See how simple that is? Let me cut this slice here. Now, some people do like to dry out their chorizo. Um, gives it a little bit of a deeper flavor, but honestly, I don't like to do that. I like to go basically fresh, pop it into my pan, and go. Now, if you've watched my other shows, you know I love to season, all right? Seasoning is key. But again, I'm gonna try to show you how simple it is to cook at home and make a stellar dish. Now, because this chorizo is already seasoned, and I'm just gonna add the um, seasoned tomato sauce, I'm not gonna put any more seasoning. Now, if you wanna take it up a notch, what you can do is add a little bit of curry, um, add a little bit of garlic powder, and add a little bit of onion powder. Okay. And that's this here. Okay, and you're gonna saute this, okay? Now, basically, this is what the casing looks like when you're done, okay? It's, it's gross, it's gross. All right, let me get rid of this and wash my hands. There we go. All right, again, this is some raw stuff, so you wanna make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly, okay? Now, keep in mind, I know I touched one of my cans of tomato sauce when I was touching the lemon, the chorizo. So, I don't wanna cross contaminate, but I know it's that can. Now, what you're gonna do is once you put it in your pot, start breaking it up, okay? Just get a plain spatula and break it up. Think about ground beef, okay? That's kind of what you want to do. You want to break it up nice and neat. Well, ground. Okay. Now, you can leave the big chunks, but honestly, um, you want consistency. You want it nice and broken so it's easier to eat, basically. Okay. And flip that over. Now again, 
this is pretty simple. In 20 minutes, you should have a yummy dish. Okay, so why did I give up gluten? Let me tell you why. Now, a few things about me. I'm horrible about keeping time, okay? One year feels like 10 years to me, or sometimes 10 years feels like a month, okay? So my timing is completely off. So please keep that in mind. It's just the way my brain works. I don't get it. Um, what else? Anyway, so I would probably say about maybe 10 years now, I've been free of gluten intentionally. Okay, there's times where I unintentionally get contaminated. Now, why? So I used to have a lot, a lot, of issues with my stomach, my whole system in general. I mean, it was to the point where there were days where it was a struggle to get out of bed, okay? I felt horrid. My energy was down in the dumps. I was always bloated and just felt like, oh. okay. It got to the point where I did go to the doctor and I'm gonna try to shorten this story, okay? So they did a colonoscopy because of my health history and because of everything, my family history, whatnot. Now, I remember waking up from my colonoscopy, I was still pretty doped up. And the doctor was saying that they did find a lot of abnormalities and they have to do several biopsies, okay. The way he was insinuating was, you know, we're hoping it's not cancer. So basically my insides to like, seemed like I was riddled with cancer. All right, there we go, I said it. So obviously, that's a bit of a panicky situation, right? I've got three boys, they were young back then. It's like, what am I gonna do? So maybe me, try not to freak out, right? So I thought, you know what, happy denial, don't think about it. Um, we'll see what the biopsies show, right? So I go to my follow-up appointment and the doctor's like, we don't know what it is. It's not cancer, but he's like, something definitely is going on. So more studies, everything comes up normal. It's like, okay, they know I'm not normal, <laughs> but again, they, they didn't know what, what the heck's going on. So I thought, okay. And there's this blood work that they could do that basically shows inflammation, right? So basically that was through the roof. Obviously there's an inflammatory, there's a response to something, but they don't know what it was. All right, fast forward a little bit. I am a nurse, okay, I'm a nurse. So yeah, it was very frustrating being in the health field, being told, yeah, there's something wrong with you, but we don't know what it is. Okay, so I thought, okay, I go see a patient and her daughter, I'm gonna say she was a gluten fanatic, gluten-free fanatic, okay? So she starts talking to me about gluten and you know how wheat really, because what is gluten? Gluten, let me clarify, is a by, like a protein, um, it's a, a wheat protein, okay? To try to simplify it. So the more I'm listening to her and she starts to say the symptoms that consuming wheat can have on certain people. And as she's listing them off, I'm like, oh my gosh, like seriously? I thought, are you kidding me? Are you telling me that wheat is causing all these issues that I have like systemically? I thought there's just no way. It just seemed like one of those things that it's like, Wheat, I mean, whole grain food is supposed to be healthy, right? Like, and it just blew my mind. And I thought, okay, I started thinking about it. I said, you know, and I was not celiac. Okay, celiac basically is a disease where basically wheat eats your gut. Again, I'm trying to simplify this, okay? I'm not going to get technical here, at least try not to. Okay, so I was negative for that. And I thought, okay, if I was negative for celiac, but yet how can... Gluten still, anyway, so I told myself, fine, I'm gonna experiment on myself. I mean, easy enough, right? I hated diets, but I thought, what if I just eliminate wheat? Just completely, just don't even eat it and see if it, I mean, what do I have to lose, right? So, I did it. And you know what, I swear to you, 
I started to feel a difference. My energy was going up. I didn't have the bloat. I mean, I felt great. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and another key thing, I, I, okay. So one weekend I made pancakes. Now, obviously I love to cook, okay? So these pancakes smelled amazing, but they were not gluten free. These were for my kids. And I thought, okay. I kid you not. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make myself. It was not bigger than this, okay? Just an itty bitty. And um, I thought, let me, I just have to taste it. All right. So I eat that along with my eggs and all, all my gluten-free stuff, right? We go upstairs so that I can get dressed for the day. I put my jeans on. They were like this big. I could not button them. I looked like I was five months pregnant. It was probably not even an hour that elapsed, right? And the boy's dad just looked at me and he's like, no way. I cried. It's like, you know, not even an hour later, that little itty bitty piece of pancake blew me up. And I thought, no, this, there's definitely a correlation between wheat and all my symptoms. And I felt like crap. I felt like crap. I thought, no, no way. Okay. So that's when I thought, you know what, um, maybe this lady is really onto something. Maybe, um, I just really need to permanently end my relationship with wheat. Now, mind you, this was like 10 years ago. This was not heard of. Honestly, it wasn't. And you know, gluten-free products, they were very, very hard to come by very hard. You know, you go to a restaurant and say, I'd ask, okay, is this gluten free? Like, what is it? And I'll tell you, unfortunately, they would always tell me, yes, of course it is. It's fine. Until I started to educate myself, for example, Chinese food laden with soy sauce. Yes. Soy sauce has a lot of wheat in it. Okay. So not safe, not okay. So as I started to educate myself, I thought, okay, <laughs> this is a new way of life and I thought okay either I'm all in and I do this for my own well-being or I just say the heck with it and feel like crap every day no so that's basically kind of why I personally have to stay free of gluten because when I do consume it oh okay so I go back to my doctor yeah and I tell him by that point, it was probably a month, and I thought, okay, all my symptoms pretty much are gone, yada, yada. And um, he's like, okay, so we can run tests, but basically you're going to have to start eating a lot of gluten again so that we can run the specific test and confirm it. <laughs> okay. Am I going to put myself through that all over again to establish what I already know? Mm -mm. I was like, screw that. No, no, thank you. I'm not going to do that. So, you know, I love my dad. I love him to death. But he was very, like, suspicious. He's like, no way. Right? Yeah. But um, literally, I would, okay, and I remember there was this sauce, right? And I knew it had gluten in it. But it's like, there's times where in our culture, it's kind of offensive if you don't eat something, right? That is offered to you. I thought, oh my gosh. I was like, how can I be nice and say, honestly, I can't eat that because it's going to make me really sick. And I mean, if you listen, hear that, I mean, honestly, it's like, how can you say that to someone? Like, your cooking isn't going to make me sick. So... I just dipped my finger, I, won't, I forgot, yeah, I, I totally remember, I dipped my finger in that just to taste it. I mean, it was really, really good. Holy cow. Not even an hour later, I was in the car on our way home because it just, it, it really, again, it bloated me up. I felt so sick, the stomach pain that I was like, I can't do this. I can't. So, yeah, there's times where I'll go out to eat. They tell me it's safe. I know. I know, but you know what? It's a chance that we have to take sometimes, right? So this is why I cook a lot at home. This is why, you know, I hate grocery shopping. I hate it. 
And you know, there's times where I will sign up for a grocery delivery service, but at the end of it, I don't complete it. Why? Because I read labels. Yes, I am that girl. I will sit in the grocery store for hours reading labels. <laughs> um, and of course, this is a new lifestyle. It, it's a way of life for me. Um, because again, it's like, if I feel great, if I feel okay, like why not put that extra effort? So that's why I experiment, I do things. So hopefully by listening to my story, and you kind of understand why, why, oh my God, Blanca's just cuckoo, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I have my moments, I have my moments. I'm, ha I'm not gonna deny it, but I do have my moments where I am a little cuckoo, but you know what, that's okay, that's just me. That's the fun of it, right? So, um, I have my, my passions. I have, I mean, if you've ever come over to my house, I bought this house because of the kitchen. I love this kitchen. I'm like so in love. And it makes it easier. It inspires me to want to be in the kitchen cooking. Hmm? All right, so let's check on our furnace over here. Let me show you, okay? Ooh, nice and steamy. See how it's nice and brown? Okay, now. I'm going to tell you why you want to wait till the end to put your sauces in because you want to make sure that your meat is thoroughly cooked, okay? Because if you put the sauce in too early before your meat is done, you run the risk of not seeing whether or not it's really cooked, okay? So same thing if you're making your spaghetti, okay? Um, I know sometimes I get impatient. I'm in a rush. I dump it in. That's like, dude, really? Like, why did you do that? But, so, fast forward 10-ish years, if you go to the store, you find so many options that are gluten-free now, okay? Now, if you want to transition to a gluten-free way of life, I mean, you have to think about things. For example, my boys, they still like their wheat, okay? So, separate toasters. Yes, I have my own toaster that's designated as gluten-free. Um, they have their toaster. Um, now, if I have a fryer, if I'm going to make things that I coat with flour or wheat or whatever, I change out the oil and I make sure I thoroughly wash it. And you know what? I bought myself a second fryer. Yeah. So, um, okay. Another thing when you're going out to eat, some things are naturally gluten-free, like uh, french fries, right? Now, where you have to be careful is, one, do you... Do, does the restaurant use the same fryer for their chicken nuggets, you know? Or do they have a dedicated fryer just for the potatoes, okay? Um, now the seasoning. Some seasonings, and I can't remember which restaurant I went to, the seasoning has wheat in it. I mean, things, places you wouldn't think that have wheat do. So that's why, I, you know, read up on the labels and yes it takes a little bit of time but once you get the hang of it it's easy trust me and you do not feel like you're sacrificing on anything no um cake in a box gluten free and you know what and you can say well but you're probably so used to the taste <laughs> again i'm one that loves to cook and i i, yeah, I love yummy food so and that's one of the reasons why I've never really kept to diet because it's like, I don't want to feel like I'm sacrificing stuff. So no, I don't eat lettuce all day. I eat really yummy stuff and I don't feel the need or the cravings. Um, now, when I do crave carb stuff, yeah, sometimes I do overindulge, but again, it's gluten-free and I don't have that guilt like, oh my God, my stomach is going to be a hot mess tomorrow. No. Okay, so this looks like it's pretty much done. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm sure you guys can see that. I mean, it's nice and brown. Mm -hmm. Now what I am going to do is add my sauces. Okay, so that's one. And here's my second one. Okay. Now, because I had touched that with the raw meat, I am gonna wash my hands again, so just a sec. Okay. 
Yeah, that's the germaphobe nursing in me. That just, it's like, ew, raw meat. Okay, so now let's go ahead and stir that. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's yum, okay. It almost looks like ground beef with spaghetti sauce, kind of. Okay, so now, I want to mix that thoroughly so that all the meat is nicely coated. And I do want the sauce to heat up a bit. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a little well in the middle. Can you see mm -hmm. that? A little well in the middle. And I am going to add my shrimp. Now, just going to put it in there. Okay. Again, these are the extra large cooked Peel deveined with the tail on shrimp. Okay. Now, let me wash my hands again. Hold on. There we go. Now that's simmering. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I don't want to break up the shrimp. Okay. Because you don't want to be all in a rush and like. Um, mess up your shrimp. Just carefully turn them on each other, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that. And gently move them around. Okay. Again, I want to make sure that each piece is nicely coated with the sauce. Now, because the shrimp are already cooked, I don't have to... Um, wait too long for this to be done. I just want to make sure that um, the shrimp heat up. And oh, look at that yumminess. If you want to use two bags of shrimp, that's quite all right. I used um, two pounds of chorizo and two cans of el pato sauce and one bag of jumbo um, pre-cooked shrimp. Now, if you are going to use raw shrimp, make sure that you thoroughly cook your shrimp in a separate um, pan, okay? Make sure that they're nice and pink. You don't want to overcook them, okay? Because then they get all chewy and crunchy. No bueno. Okay. So, I've got this simmering. Again, I'm just going to gently, gently turn it. Kind of like a scoop and turn over kind of thing. Not a, like, back and forth. Okay. And... I'm just going to let that heat up for a little bit more. I mean, how simple is that? Now, um, I have made a keto pork brined tortillas. Yes, I did. So that is definitely a great accompaniment to this. Now, if you're not ready to go gluten-free, there are some low-carb um, tortillas that are available, okay? Um, of course, I can't have the low-carb tortillas because those are laden with, um, with wheat and gluten. So, but for those that are not going gluten-free, you have that option. Um, or let's say you want something even lower carbs than the keto tortillas. You can um, use like a piece of lettuce, put a little pile of that on there, eat it, yummy. Um, now, what can you do for sides? You can do a cauliflower rice. Um, you can do a lovely green salad. Of course, when you do your salads and you're watching keto, look at the, your labels, okay? Because a lot of salad dressings have so much sugar, it's ridiculous. Even the balsamic vinaigrettes, okay, check the label, you'd be amazed. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, this is supposed to be vinegar and oil, right? But no, they add corn syrup, they, it's like, no. Okay. Um, you know what? Why don't I taste this? Let's see. Let's put that going here. Okay. First, I'm going to taste. This is amazing. Oh my god, guys. Okay. I don't like hot, hot, spicy stuff, okay? This has enough kick to give it that good, I don't want to say Mexican flavor, but it has a nice kick to it. Mmm. And the shrimp. 
Okay, let me take the tail off. <clears throat> oh my god. Superb. <laughs> I have to say, sometimes I do impress myself. It's like, oh my gosh. But yes, amazing. This is simply amazing. And how simple. Three ingredients, that's it. You don't have to add salt. You don't have to add pepper. It's good the way it is, okay? So I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a great day.